Where's the stock market headed? Up, down, or just plain sideways? Where are the best opportunities right now? Dave cuts through the fluff in a no-nonsense manner. Random Thoughts with Dave Landry Podcast. Here's your host, Dave Landry. This is your Random Thoughts Podcast for November 6, 2015. Seven Secrets to Trading and One to Grow on. Random Thoughts. Through my world travels, I've learned that everyone wants to know the same thing, the secret to trading. Everyone wants to make as much money as fast as possible. What you want to hear and what you need to hear are oceans apart. While getting ready for my next trip across the pond, I'm thinking, how do I break the news to these people gently and then give them something they can actually use? Well, maybe they are some secrets to trading. Number one, keep it simple and the trend is your friend. A market can only do three things, go up, go down, or go sideways. You can only profit from a trade by catching a trend. You must sell higher than you bought or cover lower than you shorted. So focus on just that, finding trends and getting on them. Look at price and only price can ask yourself, self, is the market headed in an obvious direction? And if so, where can I get on? Forget about the wave count, what the stochastics are saying, and above all, the situation in Nigeria. Number two, be consistent. Find one viable trading system and stick with it. I've told this story ad nauseum, but I'm going to keep telling it until you people get it. I used to spend a lot of time programming trading systems. Every day I'd come up with a new system, sometimes more than just one. When I arrived at home, I'd tell my bride, Marcy, how excited I was about my latest discovery, spouting off the statistics. And she would suffer a fool gladly. Then one day she had a question. As you married guys know, sometimes your wife can ask some really tough questions. She asked, how many trading systems do you really need? That was an epiphany for me. You need one. Just one. You need the one that's conceptually correct. The one that makes sense to you. The one that you could follow consistently. If you can't trade one system, what makes you think that you could trade a dozen? Do one thing and do it well. My work is done. Peace out. Dropping the microphone as I walk off the stage. Well, Dave hasn't left the building. My work isn't done. Most are off to chase rainbows at the first signs of adversity. The flip side happens too. When things are good, people begin to enter early, over leverage, and a host of other bad behavior that comes with the godlike complex. Yeah, I have that t-shirt too. Number three. Once you accomplish number one and number two, wait for your pitch. Patience is probably the best kept secret when it comes to trading. I often quote Jimmy Rogers who once said, quote, I just wait until there is money lying in the corner, and all I have to do is go over there and pick it up. I do nothing in the meantime, unquote. In spite of all my teaching and preaching, any time I suggest that we sit in our hands, my inbox begins filling with emails. There has to be something we could do. What if we... Trading a methodology properly can often be quite boring. Don't expect the market to entertain you. Go to Vegas or find something else exciting to do if you're craving action. Not only will you have more fun, but it'll be much cheaper than trading yourself into a hole during less than ideal conditions. If you're running money or providing a trading service, you will have some pressures to perform and provide. You must put these pressures aside. If you're a private trader, then you must not succumb to your self-imposed time constraints. The market doesn't care about your time frame. Number four, speaking of patience, once you do get in, let things unfold. You come across a beautiful setup. The stock is not only trending, but it is accelerating and persistent in this trend. There's no overhead supply to muck things up. The overall market and sector and most stocks within the sector confirm your analysis. You plan your entry, your protective stop if triggered, and where you will take partial profits. You also know how you're going to trail your stop to hopefully be in the trade for a long, long time. You've left nothing to chance. Big Dave would be so proud of you. The stock triggers and you're in. However, 10 minutes later, the trade goes slightly negative and you bail. You then watch in anguish as the stock promptly reverses and then takes off without you. Micromanagement is probably the biggest sin that I see. You must obsess before you get into a trade and not afterwards. Number five, the secret is there is no secret. Marketers love to prey on you because they know you're searching for the secret. And I quote, make 10 million in just 10 minutes a day, unquote. You can't make this stuff up. Shoot, if I could do this, 11 minutes from now, you'd never see my fat ass again. On a serious note, joining the American Association of Professional Technical Analysts, AAPTA, 
has reaffirmed that there is no Holy Grail, other than hard work and all the things I preach, like being consistent and keeping it simple. Some of my apt brethren run millions and even billions of dollars. These are some of the brightest minds in the industry. I think if there was a Grail, one of these guys slash gals would have found it. The bottom line is no one knows exactly what a market will do. Not you, not me, and not the guy who screams on TV. We take educated guesses based on experience. For me, this just means following along. And, by the way, there has to be something to follow in the first place, either an emerging or an existing trend. Number six, since it is impossible to make a decision, any decision, without emotions, reference Shoal Damasio, you have to embrace but not eliminate your emotions. Through illness or injury, the unfortunate who have had the emotional part of their brain damaged can no longer make decisions. Any decision. One decision has no emotional consequence over the other, so they arrive at a stalemate. Therefore, you must embrace and not try to eliminate your emotions. At some point, all trades will go against you. You either get stopped out or give up some open profits in the end or somewhere in between. On the avoidable adverse moves, acknowledge, accept, and like Martina McBride, just breathe. Refer back to the plan. You do have a plan, right? Provided you have obsessed by picking the best going into the trade and conditions or conducive to your methodology, then cussing and fussing is a total waste of mental energy. And BTW, it won't do a damn thing to help your position. And if stopped out, realize shit happens. Drop an F-bomb and move on by shouting next. Tip, if you are getting stopped out a lot, either your stock picking could be better or your stops are a little too tight. Number seven, be a student of the markets, but realize that the market could be a really bad teacher. The market is often a bad teacher. It will encourage you to take small profits before they evaporate and then the stock takes off without you. It will encourage you not to use stops because the last ten times the stocks came right back after stopping you out. BTW, system sellers sell a lot of systems that don't use stops. That'll work until it don't. In the meantime, they, the system sellers that is, make a lot of money. I get a lot of clients after the quote, it don't, unquote, happens. Anyway, before I digress too far, the market will also encourage you, as previously mentioned, to exit the first signs of adversity long before the stop is hit. Further, it will also encourage you to leave your viable system because it no longer works, or worse, switch to the church of what's happening now versus just staying with www.thechurchoftrendfollowing.com. In good conditions, the market will encourage you to leverage up because your system prints money. I can go on and on, but you get the idea. The market often encourages bad behavior. Number eight, you're going to be wrong a lot. Get used to it. You have been pounding the table for the past month saying that the market is in a lot of trouble. Have you ever thought about picking another line of work? I addressed these dirty words at length in a previous column. To summarize, if I was always right, as previously implied, you'd never see my fat ass again. Either that, or I'd come back to taunt you a second time. Given the same information, I'd do exactly the same thing. You have to be consistent. C number two. And BTW, I don't want to digress too far, but it ain't over yet. You can't be right every time, but you can be right over time. Whoa, Chief Orman, you really wound up today. Can we talk about the markets? To the markets. The P's, S&P 500, have gone pretty much straight back up as of late. The aforementioned bad teacher thing is rearing its ugly head. This time it's reaffirming the fact that you should buy the dips and hold on no matter what. A new batch comes along every few years. And the latest batch was born in 2009. These people don't know that sometimes you have to be prudent and cautious, honoring stops and taking sell signals seriously. He who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. Surviving to be right over time is key. Anyway... This recent run has the P's overbought and bumping up against previous tops. If the market turns back down, those who hung on through the last slide might be forced to rethink things. You know the routine, though. Take things one day at a time. The quack, NASDAQ, is similar to the P's, overbought and at resistance. Yes, the market can do whatever it wants, but jumping in with both feet at this juncture is dangerous. As I've preached over and over, it's better to be on the dock wishing that you were out to sea than out to sea wishing that you were on the dock. Something I can attest to after nearly sinking in the middle of the Atlantic, by the way. So I remain cautious. I think there's a tale of two markets. When you dig through the sectors, things don't look quite as well as the overall market bases the peas and the quack. Many are stalling well short of their prior highs. Some, like health care, health services, and drugs, look like they are in a lot of trouble. 
The bottoming process of the commodities appear to be just that, a process. Metals and mining appear to be on their way to challenge their previous lows. Energies look a little better, but the bottom here also appears to be a process and not an event. I suppose you could look no further than the Rusty, IWM, to see what's really going on. On a net-net basis, it has made much forward progress in months, and years, for that matter. So what do we do? Well, at the risk of receiving more nasty grams, I say we stay cautious. You have to find a methodology and stick with it. Yes, I'm a trend guy, but I don't see a new trend developing until the market can get to new highs and stay there, especially when you factor in the much broader action. I listen to my database. Right now it's producing a few shorts and a few speculative issues on the long side, and not much else. Therefore, for the most part, let things shake out. There will be times when you have more setups that you can shake a stick at. Right now isn't one of them. Go do something fun and let me watch the markets for you. And if you decide to sit in front of your screens, spend most of your time sharpening your axe by studying the aforementioned secrets of trading. Best of luck with your trading today. Dave. Want to learn more about trading? Visit DaveLandry.com for free reports, articles, videos, and live webinars. Got a question on trading? Email Dave at Dave at DaveLandry.com.